Welcome back, everyone, as we get set up for our fourth and final set of the day. Knights, you see the logo behind me, up against the console hype unit team coming in from North American Xbox. Your current, well, reigning world champions for the Paladins console wars. So pretty good in that aspect. And, well, with me, we have someone who knows the console teams better than pretty much anybody. <laughs> Blue. And, I mean, you guys, like, you do know them pretty much, well, maybe even better than the back of your hand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got nothing for that one. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Sometimes. Yep. Either way, it's going to be coming through. We have the Knights that are going to be taking them on. And I have been hearing nothing but good things pretty much about both of these teams. The Knights specifically have been slowly growing kind of into their own throughout this phase. Made a couple roster swaps at the very beginning. A couple players you'll recognize on the minor league hype unit team now. And those changes kind of escalated them they weren't enough to to swing their standings too far but they're a different team yeah picking up Simsalu was a big pickup i'm pretty i'm pretty sure any team in the ppl that is looking to make a change would gladly accept Simsalu, especially right. after the msi performance that he had but zarini was huge a huge pickup for them he's yeah. a really good front line and that's and he, one of the biggest things that, that's kind of come over for them is, you know, you've got some real big veterans and Cuss, someone who's been around the scene for a long time. But when you look at Simzalu, you look at Zarini, it was an EU play style, something that they didn't have before. Simzalu, when they came when he came in, they mentioned was kind of the drafting master for them, was someone who was really helping them get through and change the way they thought of the game. Yeah. And Cuss is another good draft yeah. minded person as well so just imagine having what you know some teams they they hope to have someone as good as either of them drafting for them oh, yeah. and then when you put two of them together that's that wreaks some havoc it's a lot of good talent i guess on this team that you could have and cuss has been again around the scene for an incredibly long time and it has been one of the staples not just of paladins but for every team he has been on Always going to be doing incredibly well. You can see a 2.6 KDA through the regular season. And ignore the kills, ignore the damage. Look at the healing, an average of 135K a game. And he's been bringing out all the stops. A lot of the teams slowly but surely picked up the IO, and he has not skipped out on it. Yeah, 135,000 healing per game. That doesn't sound like a lot, but we see him in the first two clips. He's on Genos, he's on IO. I mean, in the PPL, those are probably standard numbers for any support, but that's pretty impressive for two supports whose main job isn't kind of like supplying. So, I mean, their main job is supplying the heals, but yeah. at the same time, you know, there's a lot of damage reduction from IO, a lot of uh, damage boost from Genos, and that's mainly why you're drafting those two champions. And, well, they've worked out really well for them there. Again, I think I had mentioned it earlier, but, um, Knights right now are really one of the only teams that I think if you take them to Ice Mines, you're making a mistake. So maybe Hype Unit will keep that in mind. And I mean, we got to see a lot of Hype Unit yesterday, although they were still sitting around on their controllers. Looks like today they are switching over their keyboard and mouse. But Shu, man in the middle, was highest. Six KDA for them. Pain, wonderful Exodia. They just did so well from top to bottom. And Wonderful was probably the one player that I think could stand out the most. He did so much in their final set yesterday against Flashpoint. That was just game-changing. Yeah, there was a, a moment where a barrage from Victor was coming out on the high ground of the Stone Keep game, and Wonderful was playing Ash, and immediately, as I think it was even before the barrage incoming <laughs> voice line finished, he dashed right into the face and just covered up the screen. And you have to have a certain amount of distance when you're using the barrage. Yeah. And he closed that gap, so no missiles were coming down. He had to cancel that ultimate. Wonderful, the most decorated console player in history. And he can play on keyboard. I don't know if he's going to be using it today. I know Shu and Exodia will. And Exodia on keyboard is better than Exodia on controller. That's so. a scary thought. Exodia yesterday, I mean, you're looking at, you know, here, 4.0, KDA, 4, wonderful, that came through. But if you're looking at Exodia yesterday specifically, he's a 2.9, maybe not as high as you would expect out of him, but a lot of versatility in his level of play and a lot of versatility in his champions as well. And that's something that this Hype Unit team has brought pretty much all season. 
you can look at their team, the the teams they face, and maybe come up with some excuses for them, like, oh, why can't they take maps? What are they? What's going wrong? These guys just know how to play anything, everything that they need to. Uh, so it is going to be a controller for Wonderful. So what I want to know is we've seen him play off tanks at lands in the past and yeah. be successful and win them. We've seen him play damage at lands and win them. And now yesterday we saw him playing the main front line. What is he going to be playing here against a PC I, team? I guess now he has to switch to support, right? Like, I mean, that's the only next step for him? I don't know. We'll I think Shu's got I'm that on lockdown. Uh, Shu's got go. that on lockdown, yeah. You don't try to take anything away from Shu. He, especially not support, he is going to be able to run this looking pretty good for them. And again, this is actually one of the most interesting matchups specifically to me because in three different interviews with the Knights, They've been talking about how worried they are about this team more than any other team. We've asked them in the qualifiers. You know, they're like, well, if you look at the PPL teams, like SSG is probably going to cause some trouble. Yeah. Kanga might be an issue. Then they always mention the hype unit console team. They're like, these guys come out to play, and they are more of a threat than anyone's going to give them credence to. There's a lot of not only PC like PML, but there's PPL players that give Payne a lot of credit for being as good as he is against yep. them in scrims on a controller he does really well yeah i was talking to hype unit before uh i think it was last during the last set and shu told me direct quote here's what's gonna happen we're gonna smoke them or they're gonna smoke us there's no in between <laughs> he said he said someone's getting smoked a, just don't know who maybe a 3-0 either way maybe it's just four o's and they trade maps back and forth <laughs> either way that'll be interesting to see it's also fun to think of because, I mean, these guys, specifically Payne, was one of the first and really only guys on console who regularly pulled out Cassie during the console league. A yes. lot of the other teams might think about her, but like Victor, Vivian, they were always the go-tos. Talus, if he was available, he's the only one who would be like, yeah, give me the Cassie. Yeah, you saw a couple Cassies from other people, maybe like two or three, I think it was, during the regular season. And when you see those, you're like, why? Victor's open, you know? <laughs> but when you see Pain Picket, you're like, ah, this will be fun for Pain. <laughs> and only for Pain. <laughs> Everyone else, well, I guess his team might have for, fun as no, well. No, it's not fun. They, they, they all want kills, and they don't get them <laughs> because Pain steals them, and they're kind of upset. He did so well with it as well. I mean, Exodia as well, kind of coupling with them as the damage duo. Hasn't got to put his name on as many kills as Pain but has been able to bring a whole ton. When you're looking at that matchup, and I kind of want to know your thoughts, because you've seen Ricotta play, you've seen Payne play. Is there anything that Payne is going to need to kind of keep in mind to shut down Ricotta, or is it going to be a completely different styles of play? I, I think it's going to be different styles. I think Ricotta plays a little bit slower. Yeah. I think once they start to go down in sets to other teams, Cuss and the rest of the, the boys at PK kind of be like, you know, they kind of they kind of tell Ricotta like, hey, you got to get aggressive, man. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to you have to give him permission to get aggressive. Yeah. I feel like is what it is with pain. He just knows when to go. I mean, he was he, he was at high res expo last year and he played tank this year. He's playing damage. We've seen him flex onto like IO as a damage. So. He can make it work there. He can make it work anywhere. Jack Falls, Timber Mill, Bright Marsh, Frog Isle. I'm getting real sad with the Frog Isle yeah. bands, but it makes sense just because of how well the map can snowball all in favor of one team. But, hey, we'll see what they can pull out. All the stoppers are off here. The teams need to come out in full force. And Stone Keep's going to be where we go first. And this has been a very good, granted, every map's been a very good map for Hype Unit, but this has been a very rewarding map for them, I would say, above all others. What's interesting is that Frog Isle and Bright Marsh were banned. Those are both really small maps, so yeah. is a team going to be daring enough to take out triple tank or double support on a large map? Stone Keep's not that large. It is bigger than the other two mentioned, but... Yeah. There's a lot more enclosed areas than, you know, Shattered Desert, Fish, Waters, maps like that. So it'll be interesting to see what's happening. Knights are already going for the console bands. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I don't think they got the memo. There's two keyboarders over there. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, Knights with the Vivian Victor, Hype with the Mae Vivi. Yeah, if you told me this was PC <laughs> versus console, the bands kind of proved which yeah, team was which. You wouldn't, you wouldn't doubt it, right? You wouldn't have a, a second thought. 
Well, they go for the Atlas first. Makoa Willow being hovered over by the Hype. The and rivers. there's been a lot of conversation. I kind of want to know your thoughts on it. Atlas versus Makoa. Some teams prefer X, some teams prefer Y. Do you have one that you think is a little better than the other? I think Atlas has more utility. I mean, look at it this way. If you took the hook out of Makoa's kit, are you still first picking him? No. If you nerf Hands Atlas's down, damage no. a little bit, you still picking him? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's See, where it falls down. So I prefer Atlas. Uh, he, he can just do – they both do a lot. I just think Atlas can do a lot Let's go, Luna. more. Not a lot more, but a lot in a less time than Makoa can. Yeah. He's able to get a little bit more done. Draft actually flying through compared to what we normally see. Atlas Strix Khan here for the night. Strix has been a, well, godsend for Rakata so far. It's been ridiculous how many times we've seen him play it and do well. On the other side, Ayo, who's been a pretty solid and large pick today, going to be coming through for Hype Unit along with Ash. And I'll ask this one just forthright, you know, on Bazaar, on Shattered, on Fish, there's certain maps where I think Ayo and she will come through and do really well on. Stone Keep's not one of them. Does she have a lot of merit here? On Stone Keep, it, it's kind of iffy. It depends on what the rest of your composition is and what you're looking to do because a lot of people always, you know, they, they look at the drafts, but you forget yeah. that teams sometimes will draft to a certain strategy that they have in mind for a certain map with a certain comp. The last pick here for Hype is going to – this draft is the exact same draft they were beating Flashpoint with yesterday. Makoa, Ash, then they have Io and Willow on Stone Keep. So what is Payne going to play here? That's the Someday question. I like the Drogos pick, though. They don't have a true hit scan. So Hype, of course, most likely should be going into a hit scan. Victor and Vivian are gone, so, run. of course, we would see a Leon to take care of the Drogos. And I like that pick. I'm liking Hype Unit's draft, especially with the Leon – with the other two dominant hit scans taken out, Drogos comes on the board. That's a good response from Hype. And it's the same draft they used yesterday on Stone Cape. And it's, well, already proven itself one time well, this week, I guess, technically. Yesterday, now it's going to be coming through. Willow versus Strix, Drogos versus Leon. Those will be the threads that we're going to be following this time. Hype unit are looking good. We'll have to see if the Knights are looking stronger. But before we get into that, we'll jump down to the casters, find out their thoughts on this. That's right, our fourth and final set of the day about to kick off. Bees joining me down in the desk for it. And, and Bees, as much conversation as there was around like Kanga and the Hype Minor League matchup could be contested there. There's been some whispers surrounding this Hype console team and, you know, maybe giving the Knights a little bit of a run here and there. Do you think maybe this one plays out the same as SSG and Flashpoint, or the Hype Unit have a, a fighter's chance in this one as well? I'm not too sure on this one myself. I think uh, the trouble with Knights is you can't figure out Simsolo when he drafts. And, sure. Uh, if the PPL players can't figure that out, I don't think the uh, the PCL boys are going to be able to do it either. That's true. They, they definitely have a hill to climb here. And I mean, I think they're I think the Hype Unit squad have a, a decent draft, all things considered. You know, some hit scan to deal with that Drogos. Between Simsy on the Drogos, though, and Ricotta on that Strix, th there could just be a little bit too much, in my opinion, to uh, to deal with all of that. But Makoa and Willow, they at least keep that out of the hands of the Knights. We saw the, the full three stack of power picks for, uh, for SSG in our last set, so at least a little bit of separation there. Early flank around the backside. That's going to put Zarini in a good spot. G-Bunny as well following him up there. Ricotta with first blood. Hype unit PCL. They're starting to crumble here. And 15, 18 percent and climbing up on the point. High ground control all for the Knights. Instant aggression coming out from the Knights here. And we see them tear the poor PCL boys apart. Yeah. You see uh, already, when you give Ricardo this kind of easy hit scan damage, which Strix is just known for, you know, he's a very simplistic character, but he does so much. And when yep. you have that kind of level of aggression behind with a Khan in the back line, it's going to be very difficult for you to decide who you're going to focus. And then they just get so much split damage that there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah, it's a bit of a rough start, needless to say, for, uh, for Hype Unit. They were able to snag a kill on the exit from their base, but uh, Simsalu quickly shuts that one down, relatively uncontested. A small oh. misplay there. <laughs> I was about to commend Simsy there for the uh, two-minute Drogo ult. Very, very impressive. But when you do it line of sight of a Lian, probably not the smartest of plays. Yeah, Emmett Payne able to just kind of hug that side, and it did go back on the cooldown. He got it off just enough that back down to 4%, although if he continues this another two minutes from now, it'll be right back up. 
I'm not sure if they'll even have that, though. This payload has not been stopped, not just yet. And I love that juggle, the, the quick shot from Ricotta, immediate follow-up on the opposite side from Zarini, kind of the, the layup from one guy, slam dunked in by the other. I don't have much of a leg to stand on just yet. Not yet at all. They're, they're kind of balancing the perfect point of thorough aggression with the tanks, nice backline damage from the Strix, and then as soon as the Drogos sees the opportunity, he just flies straight in, yep. gets the picks, and they're just tearing them apart. There's nothing they can do at this moment. Oh, the double tap <laughs> yeah. as well from Makara. Mid-air double tap onto the uh, uh, Makara. Not enough to grab the kill, but enough to make him think twice about moving in. Exodia into the first faith light of the game for his side. He has the upper hand on Simpsy here. You have to hit your last shot. Finally finds it. Double kill for the Willow. Payload not moving in the meantime, though. Down very low. G-Bunny looking for the rewind. Ooh, nice hop there from G-Bunny. Nice hop again from the boy G-Bunny. Wow, he avoids it. Just getting out there quickly. There was a really nice aggressive push there from the Willow as well, especially the mid-air shots on the Drogos. They're, they're semi-difficult shots to hit there. Right. He did miss a couple towards the end, but he still finished the job nicely. They got maybe a couple more chances at this one if they need. Knights Cuscuti going to throw that Dread Serpent up to the high ground. First kill onto Trenzic. Exodia able to trade out onto Ricotta. That's a lot of long-range presence that's now missing here from... Pittsburgh Knights and Exodia choosing his time to dive one more time. This Willow starting to pay off in dividends on this defensive side. The Willow's playing phenomenally into the Khan. She's using the uh, the dash that she has pretty much perfectly to gain an angle above the Khan shield, which is going to strip away a lot of the survivability from Khan. Khan is phenomenal early game because he has both shield and self yep. healing, which Willow is just able to shut down. One with the dead zone and then other with the positional with her flutter up. And they'll need a little bit more of that. From Exodia, since he grabs the Dragon Punch successfully this time, gets it off and grabs the oh. kill. One more shot, Ricotta says pull and gets wonderful out from midair. Beautiful shot there from the Strix as G-Bunny up on the high ground is going to pull himself back, but nobody in range. Sometimes all it takes is a beautiful crack shot there from Ricotta, grabs the kill, and that was enough to open up the defense, and the Knights are able to push it in. Absolutely phenomenal play coming out from the boys of Knights. I think had Hype Unit been given that moment just to stabilize a little bit there, yeah. bring it to 1-1, one, one, they might have had a better chance moving into this point fight here. But I think for the fact that it's already gone two up in such an aggressive stance, they're really going to be on the back foot here, Points down in credit deficit. Seconds. And I think it's just going to help the Knights push this even further and further with more aggression. Yeah, and it's all really been on, on Exodia at this point. He's 5-4-0 and zero for Hype. Emmett Payne's got a kill on the board for himself and hanging in there damage-wise. Remember though, that was simply just a mid-air Drogos uh, stationary in position that he got the kill on. Today. That is true. That there is a an asterisk next to that one. Oh, he tried to pull the dog. Unfortunately, doggos don't come when you ask as uh, as Khan, <laughs> and she stayed in place there. Yeah, didn't didn't know uh, didn't know that command and stays right where she is. Zarini now back to 30% on that overpower. Exodia up into the Faith Flight. G-Bunny might be able to finish one more kill. Zarini's able to do it down from the low ground. Wonderful. His first big assert dominance of the game into this church side. Trying to control this space, but can't quite find any kills. He's able to turn around and snag one onto Cus Cutie. Hype unit, they have the fast cap on their side and a pretty good zone in place. Actually turns out that that kill onto the Ash earlier when she didn't wasn't allowed to get her off is kind of come into the favor now. Oh, the hook to pull him away from the uh, be gone from the IO. Still fantastic kill onto them there. Yep. We are going to have to see the Atlas touch here. He does have rewind available, though. Doesn't seem to need to use it. Seems to be pushing back in again now, though, instead. Is it going to be enough for a retake, though? Yeah, he's able to fly himself up. Does not ignite the fire spit there. One more shot's all he needed, but Emmett Payne had it ready to go. The reload needed. Ricotta is able to grab a double kill onto Exodia and Emmett Payne. The two damage dealers down now. Since he died, things were looking dire, but a brilliant individual play from Akata on the Strix kind of pulls his team back in it. Now the Knights, they have a chance to zone this one out. The thing is, again, as I said, you can't give Ricotta, especially on this map, we see Ricotta constantly on this map with the hit scan just dominate games. We've seen him with Leanne, we've seen him with other characters, but his Strix is so potent. Yeah. As long as they hold the point point for long enough to let him get back in, he does what he does, and that's all that she wrote. Were you surprised in the, the pick ban phase that Strix made it through uncontested? Uh, a little bit, to be honest. I thought Strix would have been a little bit more contested by console, because obviously he's a hit scan player. He's a nice, uh, right. easy, confirmable damage. I thought he would have been a little bit more under contention. Yeah, the Knights are happy that he wasn't. Just up to this point, the only streak in the game 
and that's Ricotta at six. Top damage by about 15,000 for him as well. And they're up 3 0 here. Hype unit, they got to draw the line in the stone per se to try to keep this payload from going in. They're going to pull Luna back. Just one more pick. Emmett Payne from the high ground. This is where you need Julian to confirm a lot of that long range damage. Yeah, they've decided to swap sides here now. They're pushing the left side instead with the Willow, which I think is quite a good idea. The Willow only really had one target when she was holding on the right side here, whereas now she's kind of being a little bit more of a contesting purpose for the high ground. But oh, nice. Simsy gets another pick with the Drogosoli. Yeah, the Dragon Punches, they've been starting to connect Ricotta from the high ground one more time. Down goes Trenzik. A big double kill for the Strix. The dog is. Not in range, the Fox not down there contesting the payload just yet. Full on zone here for the Knights. Back to base goes wonderful. Payload inching its way in. You might still have to contend though. The assert dominance does drop down. Things look good for the Knights here, but it's not all confirmed. Just not yet. Ricotta looking for maybe just one more shot. Trenzik is able to grab the kill on a Simsy. Gonna use the Ancient Rage as well. Things looking dire, but Hypian are able to fight their way back out. Big Ancient Rage from Trenzik. Emmett Payne snags a kill as well, and that's three for the Makoa, but these, there are 45 seconds left in this round, and they had to use a lot to defend. They did have to use a lot, but they still actually have a little bit more than That's the Pittsburgh true. Knights have left in the tank, and the only thing they do have available in the tank is the Strix ult, which isn't really known as the best pushing ultimate, unless they all decide to, to stand together and get a little bit of flashbang party going Ooh. for the whole game. Will seems to, seem to drop in early as well. This is going to make it a lot more difficult now for the Knights to push this one in. I reckon with 20 seconds to spare, they might still opt to just hold back, wait for Simsy to come back in, and then push in afterwards. Yeah, you, you do still have. Now the Exiles are up. That might allow G-Bunny to move in just a little bit closer. Looking for the angle. Ricotta. You know, he, he helped push in the last one. Nice mid-air shot onto Wonderful. Might just need one more brilliant play from the Strix. Finds it onto Exodia, who is on the Willow in the high ground there. Not able to find the kill. Trenchick shell spins his way right on through, but into the shell shield to keep him alive. Shoulder bash right on through from Wonderful. Grabs the kill on a Simsy. It's a one-for-one one trade, but off the map this time around thanks to the overpower from Zarini. And Nobody's identified Ricotta just yet. The jumping headshot onto Trenzik. A big double oh. kill onto Exodia as well. Emmett Payne in the high ground. The last line of defense here for Hype Unit. The Fox has been contesting this payload for so long they haven't been able to get rid of it. And it hasn't moved an inch. The respawns are going to be closer here from Hype Unit. That's all they need to grab themselves a point. That Luna contest there was yeah, what? probably there for a little bit long. Props to the Makara as well. He actually got his ulti back so fast there. Must have got a couple of kills with some streaks there to give himself that fast ulti charge. And oh well, Ricardo did burn him down significantly faster than yeah. you would well expect with those headshots. But they just left Luna on the point, and Luna did what Luna does and just contested for them. I'm looking and wondering why the payload is not moving at all, and then there's just Luna chilling there for a little bit longer. In the corner. That's right. Zodia has dropped off just a touch after the first couple of points at 7 and 10 now. SMC at 8, 7, and 6. They've, I would say, by and large, I mean, he's pretty good damage wise, but Hype Unit have dealt with Simsy on the Drogos relatively well. Yeah, they've done phenomenal against the Simsy. The hooks from the Makoas, the mid-air shots from the Willow, they've really been doing a good job of shutting Simso down, which is a big part yep. of the Knights kind of game plan, is to have Simsy run free and do damage where, in most circumstances, Simsy plays from areas that a lot of other people tend not to play from, which is what yep. makes him such a formidable person to come up against, because he plays in a style that is different to a lot of other players. So for a team like the Paladins Console League that haven't seen this, haven't aren't used to his play style a lot, yep. that's why I think they're doing phenomenal with it, actually recognizing that and shutting it down straight away. Need to watch out for his Dragon Punch. He might have to use it. Be gone, shoot, double kill on the IO. And that gets rid of both of the damage dealers now. For the Pittsburgh Knights, they have fast cap on their side. They're going to be getting 4% each tick, up to 81%. Might be on Zarini to move forward, which he's going to be able to do so. Dashes through, if nothing else, has the overtime touch, but the rest of his team isn't back, not just yet. Trenzik up on the high ground, getting healed up by Shu here as they back off. Simsalu saves the Dragon Punch, looking for a target just down beneath you. He doesn't find one, but he helps Givani grab the kill onto Shu. As Cutie lets one more Dread Serpent fly, hook down to the low ground. But Trenzik's not able to get the kill. He does, but Shell spins right back out into danger. This fight's looking brilliant for the Pittsburgh Knights. One more shot's all you need. Dodge out the Enlightenment. Quick scope in. Ricotta gets the kill. And it looks like the Pittsburgh Knights are going to zone, and they're going to grab win number one. 
absolutely phenomenal point fight from from the point tanks of Pittsburgh Knights there. We see Zarini come in to get the touch. He gets knocked around a lot. They get a lot of split angles. But regardless, in comes G-Bunny with the shield, drops it, saves him, and the rest of the team does their job and totally wipes the enemies. There were some, some light moments there from Hype Unit. The defense looked good. They were able to grab themselves that point. And kind of early on in that mid-fight, things were, were, were maybe shifting in their favor a little bit. But the Pittsburgh Knights saved maybe some, some big ultimates. The Dragon Punch didn't grab a kill, but positioned him in a spot where maybe he could re-engage on that fight. By and large, I think a, a good, clean win here for the Knights. We saw SSG maybe struggle a little bit in Game 1, so I think important for the Knights to grab a relatively clean Game 1. Yeah, for sure. I was wondering like, maybe if it's going to be the reverse in this way, right. though. The console <laughs> is going to start a little bit weaker and get progressively better, whereas we've seen the reverse in the last one, because from the point fight, the first two points, what yeah. it became, they definitely looked a little bit uh, stronger in the late game. Sure, I agree. We'll have to see if maybe Hype Unit continue to dial things up in game two right after this. You don't have to mention you just like their attention It's written all over your face I don't want to play the quiet time The Knights take game one, although not without snags coming through. Wasn't a full 4-0, but they were in control for a majority of that game. Blue, Hype Unit were able to find a little bit of relief throughout that, but what was going wrong for them, or I guess on the other side, what was going so right for the Knights? Strix, man. All Strix. Yeah. Uh, so Hype Unit's... Hype Unit's uh, the, their composition was a late game comp, so yeah. they had to get to the late game. You know, you get a couple Havens online, and then you have DR from IO coming in, and you'll be able to deal with the Strix. He won't hurt as hard, but they couldn't get to that point, so Sh Ricotta was just putting bodies yeah. to the floor. 118K. Yeah. I want to see a slash line. You give him maybe half a second more i'm assuming that ticks over to 119 17 3 and 7 that's uh it's pretty good don't you say yeah that that wasn't a, a fast game but it wasn't like a long one either too yeah. so 17 and 3 is pretty crazy uh yeah he he did i think hype yeah, should go he did all right that was I, pretty good i think hype should go for khan instead of the makoa they play khan better than they do makoa but ricotta was just sh shutting it down man he we talked about him a little bit earlier, and he's living up. And you cannot doubt this guy's aim. I think it's the kind of one staple that comes through. And I feel like well, we haven't seen Strix. That shot was nice right there. And then there was another one where Simsalu uh, was. So Ricardo's right here in this spot that he was yeah. in the doorway. And there was someone on steps. And they got ulted by Drogos. But Ricotta headshot him. A milli, like a millisecond right before the dragon punch hit him. Theoretically, you wouldn't have yeah. to, you know, hit him with the dragon punch, but it, Simsalu couldn't turn away. That's how fast that came in. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah, he was right. hitting some nice headshots there. Look at him smiling. He already knows. He knows. It. Yeah, he I knows. Mean, you can't not. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 17, 3, and seven, all on a controller, by the way. This nah, guy, nah, no, 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 no. He has the option. For he him. could do it. He could. I mean, it's there. He could plug it in and play it. Whether or not he can. Do the same performance <laughs> while he's playing on controller. I have some personal doubts, but maybe Ricotta, like, he goes home, he scrims with the Knights, and then afterward boots up Paladins on, like, his Xbox or his PS4, and he's just going at it. Well, that is a PS4 controller he was holding in his okay, hands. So. so, could use Gyro. 
we just figured it out. He's a gyro god. It's been the it's been this case the entire season. I can't believe we didn't know it. Ricotta dethrones Raokan as the gyro god. Poor Raokion. That's like he had that going for him. Ricotta just wants to rip it away. It's not fair. I have to pay respect. Either way, it's looking pretty good for them right there. First map goes their way. We'll have to see the second map, Shattered Desert. A little bit more brawly could open up the door for Hype Unit to do well here. Yeah, they played Shattered Desert yesterday, Hype Unit. They had an IO on that map as well. They had Khan, too, and they were going against the Strix. And they were able to win that match. So if they give Knight Strix, I think they would be okay with it even after the performance from last game. Maybe not because of the performance, but Hype, like I said, get the con, get your IO, maybe ban out Makoa. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they, they adapt the bans more than anything. Well, or not at all. Eevee, Maeve, still banned out by Hype Unit. Victor Vivian, still banned out by Knights. All right, so this, here's... Th I'm going to be honest. This feels you so... Like, these are stereotypes at this point, right? Like, this isn't just good bans, but they, they feel like stereotypes. So, Victor is a good ban against a console team, of course. Vivian is, too, but I don't think it is against Hype because they don't really play Vivian that yeah. much. Not even through the regular season, not yesterday that much. They played Tyra and, and Willow and Leon a lot. Uh, so... They banned out Eevee and Maeve. I think that's good because those are really two not only mobile characters, yeah. but Sims plays those really well. Yes. And last game he had to play Drogos. You know, he's known for like Eevee, Maeve, Drogos, Pip, right? And Drogos, Pip are a little easier for a Leon to deal with than an Eevee, Maeve. Whether it's console or PC, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just the champ. You're out of uh, time. So they take the Makoa first. That's good. But of course, the Atlas Single will be in response. And the Strix will come through as well. You had been mentioning the con. We'll see whether or not Hype Unit are going to opt for that. Probably in this next phase. Maybe they will wait until their last two. But Strix is, I think, where my mind goes. You mentioned how good Eevee and Maeve were because of how potent it is for Simzalu. We just saw how good Strix could be for Rakata. Does it feel like you, you should have traded one of those nobody. bands for him? Or <laughs> because it's shattered, because Eevee and Maeve are pretty good here, you just have to deal with the Strix. No, it's Sims. The last time he played in a placement match like or a placement tournament like this, he qualified. True. Okay, so you, pretty, you pretty continue well. target banning Sims. Uh, I think he'd be okay giving Strix to Ricotta, especially in Shattered Desert because there's nowhere for him to hide as well. Uh, so it kind of goes both ways, although he could just pop off on it again. They do get the con. Here's the interesting thing. Hype gets two off tanks on Shattered Desert, and in reality – kind of like fish market as well there's not really anything for you to hide behind anywhere on the map in general yeah. but especially the uh, the capture the mid fight and so an main tanks are darkness. pretty much just meatballs that stand there and Last get hit so i mean draft two offensive tanks and go aggressive yeah it is interesting they're drafting willow willow's a good champion but they played very very well with exodia on tyro yesterday so True. I, you know, I'm wondering why they don't go after that. Now, on Shadow Desert, I wouldn't see a Tyra. We'll have to see. Oh, the triple tank. If they want to pull it out at some other point. Well, they're hovering triple tank. Hype unit at the, uh, the last the land had some success with triple tank. I'm going to put an asterisk on that because it's it wasn't necessarily wins, but they did push teams the limit. Now they've locked in the Inara. They've got the Willow. How do you feel about their draft? They've used triple tanks since MSI, too. But the question that I really have about that is, you know, they had to bring a sub who was a tank. So they had three tanks. So was that the game yeah. plan or were they just doing it because – so th that was always my question. But Grover's a good support for the triple tank. They have a nice triple tank set up. They have Makoa, the hook, a lot of damage for him as well. They have Khan who can provide a lot of self-sustain, let alone a lot of damage, has some utility within him as well. Pittsburgh Knights hovering over the Ruckus. That would be interesting. I think Ruckus is good on Shattered, and a lot of people Time haven't realized that. Our enemy. Oh, I think I'll they might be on the same page as you. The question I have, though, is actually going to glance over the Ruckus because you mentioned you think he's good here. I want to know Strix versus Willow on Shattered. Which one? Like, I mean, it's two triple front lines going against each other. Nah, Which DPS Strix comes out on that. top? Strix wins that. Strix wins that. That butterfly is just like a target hanging from the sky. Uh, I would expect the Khan to push into the Strix. The Willow could go with him if that's what they decide to yeah. do. But I think Makoa and Khan can pressure the Strix. I think Anara 
Grover and Willow could put a lot of pain on the three. T it's triple tank versus triple tank. Yeah. This is. It, it's, I'm having it, some flashbacks for like it's like two years ago at this point. But whoever headbutts each other the hardest, man. This is like two headbutts. Yeah, they're gonna be slamming against each other. We'll have to see who is going to triple tank better than the other. Knights are up one. Let's see if they can make it two. Oh, we got triple triple in store for game two. The Knights are gonna get Strix back for Rakata. I'm scared of that one. I mean, Willow, they brought it up. A great pick, but the B is, uh, is Willow going to have free airspace with Ricotta firing up in the sky? That's kind of the question here. It's a tough one. When you when you hit shots like Ricotta, I don't think the Willow is enough. But I will say what the Willow is good at is hitting Strix when he's in this. Sure. The splash damage from Willow is phenomenal at hunting down the low HP Strix when he's trying to get away. So that's where it does come into its own. Yep. But again, this is Ricard we're talking about. He's going to hit his shots. You're going to have to flutter into him. You're going to get hit with unauthorized use. Are you alive? Probably not. Yeah, the, the contingency of that is the low health portion. It's getting yeah. him down to low health first. We'll have to see if uh, Hype Unit are able to do so. A triple tank for both sides, and Ruckus rearing his head here as well for the Pittsburgh Knights. It's Shattered Desert, by and large, a pretty good map for him as well. Exodia, you already caught one oh. big shot from Ricotta. Was able to grab the kill on a Simsy. Zarini finishes off Exodia. Ricotta teed that one up, and now Emmett Payne just looking to run down. Good setback, wonderful able to finish off G Bunny. So trades early on here, going the way of Hype Unit. Just trade for trade, but Hype Unit just constantly on the point. They're getting yep. up to 50% capture already, with Pittsburgh basically not having a touch on it at all. And as you said, they're just trading back and forth. Now they're going to need to move in Ricotta. Since he's able to dive in, get that Grover out, so much of these triple tank comps rely on that healing to be spread evenly throughout everybody and not going to be the case here that's going to be the opening the knights need move on in kills all for the pittsburgh knights right now haven't surpassed hype unit just yet but this zone is very detrimental and i think it's going to be tough for hype unit to break out yeah when you think especially on this map when you have triple tanks you have every angle covered perfectly you have the mid the left and the right all angles that they're not gonna be able to push through without taking a lot of damage and uh they're getting walled off, they're getting held in place here. This is not looking, ooh, but then Zarini ends up dropping as the first one, but a little bit too late, as Pittsburgh Knight already captured the first objective. Yeah, everyone's looking at Zarini in the meantime. They still have one of those three tanks back on the point capturing, and this is where you have to be careful. Shattered Desert, I think, can move pretty quickly if you start to lose too fast after the mid fight. Ricotta starting to warm up a little bit. 3-0-3, top damage by far on that Strix, and look at the Look at the kind of discrepancy, 17,000 damage for Wonderful, and then Exodia down on the Willow at about 10,000, less than all three tanks for Pittsburgh Knights. You're going to need a little bit more. I think as well, especially on the first point fight, we've seen them really focus Simpson as he pushed in on the Ruckus, which is precisely what you need to do. Ruckus thrives on getting in, doing his damage, and being ignored. If you ignore sure. Ruckus, that's when he becomes a problem. And it seems to be the more that the game goes on, the more they're ignoring the Ruckus and allowing him to get away with just a little bit too much. Yep. Lots of uh, lots of focus to be spread around. If it's if it's not Ruckus, you got to look at Ricotta. And if you're looking at Ruckus, and suddenly you're not looking at Ricotta, too much to focus on seemingly at times for Hype Unit. Since Lou's able to get the kill, back behind that big Atlas wall, keeping him nice and safe. Seismic Crash drops down, locks up two for Wonderful, but he's very low health here. Plenty of damage to capitalize. Exodia with the saving kill, maybe for Hype Unit, but they're going to have to dive in, try to get a contest. Trenzic has the Ancient Rage. He's able to use that one, getting absolutely melted through. The zone is on from the Knights. Trenzic falls. His payload goes in to a T. The Knights are playing this triple tank comp. The way the Knights are doing this is phenomenal. As I said, the, the Ruckus has just got in there. He uses his ult. They use the Inara's wall to block out the ultimate. But then as soon as the wall drops, they go to focus the Ruckus, and instantly the Atlas pops his shield at an angle that just gives him yep. free reign to continuously push in because of the way that he angles it, whilst also simultaneously making it impossible for them to damage the Ruckus. Absolutely phenomenal play. And furthermore, now pushing into this, they've lost their Makar ult going into a 2-0 deficit. Yeah. That was the, the last-ditch effort from Trenzic just to try to save something. I mean, the response were somewhat close, but uses it there. And you could see, I mean, he was kind of turning around trying to choose which member of the Knights to look at. And unfortunately, I don't think there was a right answer to that question. Gus Cutie at 2-0-10, undying so far, and 11 and a 10 streak for Simpson and G-Bunny as well. Ooh, this is what you hate to see. There's a lot of record and quarterized level yep. ones on the side of PCL. 
Arguably one of the biggest things that can happen in the game is on getting that level two onto either Wrecker or yep. on the Port Rise. And when your team doesn't have any of it, you're you're looking at a hard round coming up. There's lots of ultimates starting to fly from both teams here. In flame from the Pittsburgh Knights, pushes them forward. Great hexafire spot, tears through shoe. Timber goes that tree, Emmett Payne falls as well. And one more big mid fight for the Pittsburgh Knights. They're back on the point the entire time anyway. Still exile, still a flashbang to go. And the zone is looking good. Again, same thing happens last time. Knights get the the aggressive play style. They win the fight. But instead, this time, they were on the point fight yep. the whole time as well. So the likelihood of Hype Unit getting back to touch this, pretty much going to be a zero here, especially with the ult deficit they're in as well. Yeah, it did. You know, we, we brought up sort of some of the ultimates going into this game. And Flame just makes scary stuff scarier now if you're your hype unit and the way they kind of stagger those i think the dome shield was used pretty well opened things up for the rest of the team to follow up so yeah, your hype unit you gotta try to draw the line here and exodia getting a kill onto simsy Th those little moments you need to start to stack those and buy yourself some space with just that small advantage precisely what needs to happen as well as soon as the ruckus comes in turn on the ruckus make sure he drops out as fast as possible and then you can turn back onto the remainder of the team hype unit doing a phenomenal job of this now Hopefully they can carry a little bit more momentum from this yeah. push here now. I'd like to see them be a little bit more aggressive than they've been now, to just kind of stagger them out. They're staying a little bit further back. I think they're just giving Pittsburgh a little bit too much freedom to push straight back into the cart here now. If you're a hype unit, where do you maybe draw that line up forward, maybe keep them back in the cave a little yeah, bit? Yeah, where the U-turn cave is, I'd like to try and see them push into there, but maybe they were just a little bit too wide of the damage yeah. from Strix coming out. Uh, but they did have respawn on their side at that point. And as I said, they've just given them a little bit much, too much freedom now to just push straight back in and gain that momentum that they've had for the entire game. It's a valid concern, to be fair. I'm yeah, scared of a, a lot of the damage concern. of the Knights as well. Ricotta with two, waiting for the shield to drop, makes three. Damn. Delayed triple, and, and that's kind of what you just, you can't really game plan around stuff like that. I mean, maybe at some point you consider banning it or picking it away, but give this guy a free sight line, and odds are a bullet's going to be filling it. The trouble is, in my mind, all I think is if you're going to take the Strix away from him, he's just going to take the Leander to the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think they're going to be able to ban him out in a particular manner. And what a phenomenal jump away there from the Inara Oli. Dodges out the seismic crash. Ricotta way up in the sky is able to get it. I mean, maybe you just have to overpower him back into your base. But in the meantime, the rest of the Pittsburgh Knights moving forward. Health bars chipping away. Ancient oh, Rage no. not able to come out here. Simsalu into the Hexafire with the big old double kill. One last guy falls, the Pittsburgh Knights win it, and it's convincing on Shattered Desert. Oh no, that is that is tough if you're hype unit. I think you hate to see balls it are rolling. Well. Balls are rolling right now if you're the Pittsburgh Knights. A little bit too much greed there on the Makaro. He wanted to get a little bit too low before he used it. He should yeah. have definitely popped it as soon as it was available for him. We, I, I kind of agree with your point. We we sort of mentioned it's hard to ban out Ricotta. It's, it's a very yep. similar thing to what Flashpoint we're having an issue with with Freeze God in our last set. Yep. Yeah, they banned out the 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 uh, Mave and the Eevee so often. He just pivots to something else. They're doing a lot of that with Simsalo, though, as well. The, the Eevee and the Mave, and, and maybe that's not so much Freeze God-centric. It should be. Yep. But, you know, maybe PC-centric. Simsalo, very good on the Eevee and the Mave. Just the same. Pittsburgh Knights. Cuss Cutie. He's feeling confident. He's making controller signers, signals <laughs> out of the window. They grab win number two, looking for win three right after this.
the Knights are able to do it one more time, this time a little more concise, a 4-0 for them on Shattered Desert. Hive Unit, unfortunately, just don't quite seem to know how to handle the Strix, and the Willow, unfortunately, was kind of counterpicked with that. And so, Blue, i, I got to turn this question on to you. You've looked at it. You were talking about how good EV Mave bands were going to be. Do you trade one of them out for the Strix? Is it worthwhile taking it away from Mercada, or... Do you have to just figure out how to deal with it at this point if you're hype unit? Yeah, I feel like I'm stuck in a simulation. It was the same thing. Ricotta it's just <laughs> popped off. I mean, okay, it still makes sense to leave them open because, again, of the whole Sims theory that I had. Yeah. But at this point, I mean, you're down 2-0, so... Something's going wrong. I can't even imagine who would... Well, hype unit sub... Is cool, Matt. They could sub him in. He's a great Strix. If they're going to take it and they still want to ban Eevee Maeve. Yeah. That could be a, a situation here. I don't know. Ricardo's just on top of his game. He is 10-3-5 and five this game. I'm also going to give a shout-out. 8-2-13 and 13 for Simsaloo on the ruck. It's not a combo of words I'm used to saying, honestly. But Ricotta... Well, he was the one making the flashy plays. Now collectively 27, 6, and 12 from the last two games. You could say his Strix is pretty good, <laughs> I, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah. His aim, so it's a little above average, just slightly. And that uh, he might have something to do with the Knights winning here. I mean. For you, chat. If you're not gonna, sarcasm. If you're not going to take Strix or ban him, I think it's time to drop the Willow. Yeah. Because Strix just dumpsters Willow. It's an easy target for him. At least with a Drogos, you can, like, you know, bounce around in the air. With Willow, yeah. you go in the air twice. Once when you flutter, which lasts uh, as long as you yeah, blink. Very briefly. Yes. And then there's uh, your ult, which is just putting you in perfect Strix airspace. Yeah, ban the Strix, pick the Strix. I, I don't see them picking the Strix because I can't imagine who's playing it. I mean, Payne can pretty much play anything, so they can give it to Payne. But yeah, you got to do something about it. Y yeah, you got to do something. Message, right? Yeah, just this is where you this is where you go to. You know, you get your first two pages of strats. That's if you're winning. It's time to go to page ten. What what to do <laughs> when Ricotta specifically on Strix keeps. Just causing a whole ruckus. Well, I guess they were causing a ruckus that time, but I'm pissed. Either way, it's going to be looking good for the Knights. They're one map away from sealing the deal, moving themselves forward in the bracket. And, I mean, it's interesting for them. They'd be going up against Kanga if they are the victors there. SSG going up against Renegades in the winner's bracket, whereas whoever is going to lose this one will find themselves kind of awaiting, I believe, one of the loser bracket winners. I'll have to look a little closer to look at it. As we go towards Frozen Guard, and they would be waiting either Fatal Ambition or Hype Unit, PML. So maybe a little bit of pressure here. Well, not just a little bit, a lot of pressure for Hype Unit to win this one. Otherwise, they might end up facing their namesake in the lower bracket. Wait, wait, soon. wait. So if Hype Unit loses this, there's a chance that we get to see Hype Hype? Yeah, so the we could have seen Hype Hype if both of them won their set. Well, if, yeah. if Hype wins this and Hype PML would have won against Kanga, then we could have seen Hype Hype. We will have to see Hype Unit, the the PML team. They have to win against Fatal Ambition. Although I think a lot of people would probably take that bet on happening. You're but uh, if they are able to do that and well, you see this be the last game for Hype Unit, we will have a Hype Hype matchup. Oh no, Land's a be beast of its own. Lan yeah, is a different. You never know what Lan is different than than regular season all the time. And lower bracket specifically, it feels like it hits harder. Like for some reason, like once you're down there, I guess it is the pressure of you lose, the you go home. Yeah, the, the fire gets ignited. We've protection. seen more teams with upsets from a lower bracket run Good than night. anything else. Most definitely, that's always like you lose first, and you're like, oh uh, yeah, but then like you could turn into a dark horse Champions. or into a Cinderella story. But choose. Strix is getting banned this time, they so they me. they let the Mave go through. So Mave gets picked uh, with the Makoa. That's pretty aggressive, but I like taking Atlas first. They took Makoa first last time and gave up Atlas. They're switching it around this time. Uh, so Sims is going to be on Mave. That's a good look. 
They're going to have Io on a nice on, open map, like Frozen Guard as well. So they can five-man zone. That's, you know, the <laughs> best thing about it. <laughs> I think, so when they do Io, right, they yeah. play the DR card, the damage reduction on mm -hmm. her heal in her talent. That gives damage reduction when you're to the fox when you're healing the fox. I will bring an yeah. end to the darkness. You can keep that fox alive. That pretty, is strong. Pretty long. Yesterday we saw five, five bulldozers not be able to take that down because they're healing the fox with DR. If you really want to go insane. into it, you can dive deep and get the like what I think you can get two thousand health or maybe a thousand health. Yeah. On top of Luna, you can make a real tanky fox. That's another character. Through all of this, yeah, it's another body to have like you said they banned the EV and the Strix so this time Ricotta has to flex onto something different and right now they're hovering the Leon but Atlas, Victor, Barrick, Furia, Cassie for Hype Unit, Makoa, Maeve, Io, Ash presumably this Leon getting locked in we're going to Frozen Guard out of these do you have anything that, that stands out the most to you as a winning draft? I like the Hype draft this looks like something SSG would run yeah I could actually see that, that. that's a Space Station Gaming but here's the, the question Who's playing Cassie? Exodia on keyboard or Payne because he usually plays the Cassie? That's an incredible question, honestly, coming through. A Neil. lot of player choices that could impact that. Victor's been very good on this map. Cassie's usually good, just period, especially against Makoa. So there's a lot of merit to it. But who's playing it might have more merit than just the counter matchup. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you have the counter. If you just can't play it or you can't match your opponent, it's not going to come through. You said you're feeling hype unit. I'm prone to agree on this one. I think their draft is really solid for Frozen Guard, but it's not going to be up to us. It's up to the teams, and, well, the casters are going to be the ones who take us through it. Thank you very much, Gore. Knights looking for one more win to close out this set and close out our day. We we, we talk, sort of talked bees about the, the Strix conversation. Take it away from Ricotta. He's just going to pick up the Leon here. Yep. Granted, it's not quite as full burst maybe is a full rotation Strix, but in the hands of Ricotta, still scary. And also you've just released the uh, Simpsolo <laughs> yeah, on yeah, the that's right. as well, you know. You've, that's right. You've released their trap card, as some might say. I guess, yeah. I mean, the, the Strix fills in the band slot for the Mave. And Ricotta's just going to get the Leon anyway. Frozen Guard, some long sight lines for that Leon to take advantage of. This is it. Simpsy has been forced on the champions. He probably didn't want to play. Gets, although he probably had fun on that Ruckus. Definitely I can't imagine that Ruckus yeah. game wasn't fun for him. Right. It is Emmett Payne on the Victor. So Exodia likely on the Cassie for Hype Unit. Long sight lines, though, and, and a map where I think Io can still do pretty well for the Knights. Yeah, for sure. I was quite shocked, to be honest, that the uh, boys of Pittsburgh didn't take the Cassie a little bit earlier. Yeah. Just to give them that extra little bit of bonus to the May Vault to take away the counter from Hype Unit. Uh, I true. think the Io pickup was really good, especially for this map. Uh, a lot of the point fight is spent kind of circulating around the map on this. So if you can just leave Io on the point and just constantly do damage to the others whilst yep. mapping, it's never a negative. Great. Knights are able to grab first blood though. The the stasis field from Trenzik there bought a lot of time for a hype unit, but I feel like the moment that wall dropped, the Pittsburgh Knights stormed. That's five for zero. The zone is on. I kind of want to ride with Simsy for a second, just to, we haven't seen him on Maeve yet this set. I just, this isn't going to be a very exciting uh, rotation for the Maeve, but I imagine now he's kind of back in his wheelhouse and in the spot where he'll look to have a pretty good game. I mean, when you have to use your Atlas shield to get out of base, you know you're in trouble. But as said on the first point there, what we've seen happen, uh, the boys of Pittsburgh, they managed to do a full rotation round, pinch the enemy, and yeah. those guys just stayed on long instead, and it gave them quite an easy point fight. Uh, the Barrack had to stay on point to contest versus the Luna, made it a 5v4, and they just absolutely wiped it instantly. I gotta say this, Ricotta been nothing but flawless today, except he uses the Leon gun with a scope on it. I'm I so glad you bought this up. I can't, I can't get behind it. I can't get behind <laughs> it either. This is the one game, I like the Pittsburgh boys, this is the one game I'm, I'm officially now rooting for the Hype Unit team. I just... I don't know. I don't know either. I was so happy when they when they brought it out and they were like, you can have both, all right? You can have the with the scope and without the scope. I was like, thank you so much, because I love that skin, but I yes. hate that weapon. I agree. I, it, we, we did a king of the ring with Ricotta, and he was on Leon, and same thing. Pick the uh, pick the scoped one. I guess it works for him, so Maybe why there's not? there's something we don't know. Maybe it's like a pseudo Strix in his mind. Right, right, he right. He likes to pretend he's still on Strix. It's the same energy. And he gets to use the scope still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the same energy, same vibe. 
Seems to be working here. He grabbed a kill. Simsy follows up with another, but Exodia with some good shots. Andre Ricotta is going to clean up the Leon, but Simsy's still alive, wreaking oh. havoc. Nobody from Hype Unit in range to dodge on down there. Maybe one of the fastest cap pushes on Frozen Guard I've seen. And Most definitely. Normally you get at least one defense coming out onto the Frozen Guard. You see as well on the high ground there that the, the, the Luna stuns out the Cassie, which puts her in such a low health yeah. predicament that she had no choice but to roll backwards, but then it just allowed him to constantly push the cart through. Look at that pinch too. You brought up the pinch, and, and that was a great angle to kind of watch it from G-Bunny yeah. all the way around. At that point, Hype Unit had just too many targets to look at. One kill on the board for Hype Unit, and that was the very end of that round. Exodia on to Ricotta. Three, now they've two, got their Cauterized 2s online, some Haven 2 as well. Uh, so definite credit advantage here for the Pittsburgh Knights. We see them as well pushing into the Bulldozer, but truthfully, I think it'd be way more better for them to just kind of build up a little bit more Cauterized and record defense. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Luna is going to be their main issue right now. I think the enemy players Oh, their main issue right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You have to worry about the uh, the Pittsburgh guys instead of their Fox. And maybe looking for it here. Emmett Ooh. Payne trying to find one more shot on Barrage. So dominance was used by G-Bunny, so now he has to pull back without any of that immunity. 27% for the Knights, still fighting from the point here. First kill of this re-engage. G-Bunny onto Trenzik. Simsy so low, but that mobility so hard to track. A double kill from the Ash, wonderful caught out here. Into the hook he goes, he's shortly gonna fall, no more. Fail safe for him, and Serini with some style points finishes that one off. Pittsburgh Knights, they're gonna zone, they're gonna grab point three, and Hype Unit, they're looking for something here on this defense. We see such an unfortunate team fight there for the uh, Hype the Unit boys. The Ash gets the assert dominant off, like assert dominance off. The Atlas just misses the rewind, which would have yep. been phenomenal for them. And then the Victor ulti has only the Ash at line of sight and ends up using one of his charges on an Ash in ulti, obviously doing absolutely zero damage. Oof. Was able to help his team trade out. It's both of the tanks that finish off both of the damage dealers there. I mean, I was going to say a better showing here. They, they've at least gotten one kill on this defensive side, but the Pittsburgh Knights, they're rolling right now. Two minutes left. I don't know if they're going to need all two of those minutes. Even with the kill, though, the cart didn't stop moving yeah. at any point in that as well. So sometimes kills like that end up working against you as well. You've just allowed it to go back and spend a little bit more credit. Yeah, that's true. Furthering the advantage that he has. That's if true. stopping the cart moving, then, then what's the call? They got the, uh, the credit boost from capping and didn't have the chance to spend, but... Now they do. Minute and a half left, but Pittsburgh Knights knocking on the doorstep of the big 3 0, the big 4 0 on Frozen Guard. Move themselves to face, I believe, Kanga tomorrow in our bracket. Frenzik with some of that long range damage on the Atlas. Looking to confirm maybe a little bit here. The Knights playing it slow. Look at that health bar on Simsy, top right of your screen. Very low. Ricotta turning. Enlightenment on the shot. Emmett Payne's able to get the kill onto Ricotta. So one for one trade here, but Cus Cutie finishes off the Victor Beacon one more time. G Bunny has the assert dominance into the dome shield, but booped out goes wonderful. Stasis Field dropped as well in the hype unit base, so that's going to buy them a little bit of time. G Bunny all locked up. He's going to try to assert dominance right on the other end of it. He isn't shoulder bash, but he's able to drop down. Nobody's cleaned him up. But finally, some kills for Hype Unit. I was about to say this is a phenomenal ult from the Atlas. They're staggering them out while some of yep. the other boys from uh, Pittsburgh Knights are coming back into the fight. They hold the others there for an extended stagger, but they very nearly got back out there at the end. Yeah, I, that was close. That was very close for them and very clutch. Ended up working in their favor because, again, it just further increases the stagger. But that was a clutch moment right there. Have to be careful, though. You don't have the dome shield here. Simsy looking. Maybe an around the side play. Can use the dash, cooldowns reset. One more dash, jumps back up. They were privy to it. They heard it. Exodia <laughs> turns around and blows up Simsy. I like the idea, oh, but Simsy. Exodia knew it was coming. Scout still in the back pocket, so it wasn't because of that. Question though, was Simsolo going to reach that before he got the knockup from sure. the I wasn't sure. I think the Cassie knockup actually helped him reach the stage there. I agree. But then ultimately was his demise as well as he got instantly bursted afterwards. I wasn't I wasn't sold that Simsy was going to make it back, no. but none, nonetheless, Exodia saved him from uh, maybe not reaching the side platform. Good he defense. Tried his best. He tried. The thing is, I know Simsolo, and I know for a fact he's definitely practiced that, and he knows he could make yes. it. Yes. 
you got to. So how did he not make it? I think. I mean, the jumps probably in that situation they got to be perfect. Yeah, the, the, the resets have to be. I mean, that is probably such a a specific kind of cooldown centric play. Yes, for sure, for sure. Nonetheless, though, Hype Unit are able to grab a defense after what looked like would be maybe a 4-0 here for the Pittsburgh Knights. Exodia on a 7 streak at 5-5-5. Five, five, and five. Of his 10 affected kills, 7 five, have come four, at 5 deaths. So three, starting to two, maybe make some moves here for his team. But the mid-fight, that's been the big loss here for Hype Unit and something the Knights have felt very comfortable with. Yeah, as I said, the, other, the Hype Unit boys need to start rotating a little bit more. As you can see, they're doing the same play again. They're just pushing down the left side. They're allowing the rotations to come out from Pittsburgh Knight, and once again, Finch is slowly coming in. Yep. The barrack stays on the point with the Luna there, and it's just not enough. You should allow the Luna to cap the point for a little wow. bit, win the point fight, go for the zone, and then you can kill the Luna or fight the Luna on point if you want to. Yeah, try to focus on something else. The the yeah. mobility, the, the rotations from the Knights, just a little bit too much here. Wonderful. The last alive did get 74% yes. for Hype Unit on the point. But that's a, a full team sweep there for the Pittsburgh Knights. So one last zone maybe on here from them. They're going to be normal slow capping it. 3% for every tick. Zarini now back and joining the fight. 48% climbing barrage maybe to soften up some of that front line. Can't quite find a target. 40% left, so that's going to charge. Hopefully, if your hype unit by the end of this round maybe gets one more shot at it. 81% yeah. climbing Pittsburgh Knights. They have to be gone. That one's going to get used. G-Bunny grabs the kill onto Emmett Payne, but Exodia is able to trade out now onto G-Bunny. But he dodge rolls in. Simpson is still alive. Ricotta finishes off the kill. One more Dome Shield to try to save this game, save this set. Wonderful is the last man alive. And once he falls, Hype Unit will as well. The Pittsburgh Knights, they roll their way to a 3-0 in convincing fashion. Raw to you too. Right Bye. now. <laughs> there we go. Extended just a little bit longer. That's got to feel good if you're the Knights. You've had some downtime, a couple weeks on the end of the PPL. You come in, you get business done. Again, there's you know some chatter surrounding this matchup. I know that the uh, the hype console team looked great yesterday in console wars. They were feeling good coming into this matchup here. There is a world where we see a hype versus hype matchup tomorrow, with uh, Fatal Ambition playing hype minor league. And if hype minor league wins that one, they'll move on to face hype console league in our maybe second or third matchup of the day tomorrow. But nonetheless, Pittsburgh Knights. Convincing. It's always a question. Teams coming back from downtime, how they look. I don't know if the Knights have skipped a beat. Definitely not skipped a beat. Uh, they're looking very strong at the moment. And uh, as I said, with the, the Knights, they play in sometimes very weird manner. And uh, I think it's very difficult for the for the console boys to come in and yeah. fully grasp how they kind of play as fast as you can, which is very difficult. I think they did a phenomenal job in the first round mm -hmm. and then kind of faulted in the last two. Yeah, you can see, in, including in our last set with, with Flashpoint, you know, first games, they're hanging around, extending things out a little bit, keeping things interesting. And then whether it's, you know, shot calling, just maybe more consistency from some of the PPL teams, they extend out those games. Both of those end up in a 3-0. That's it for the first day of the Paladins World Championships Qualifier Week. All four sets are done for, so let's go back to the desk. Well, like they said, the Knights are able to do it. They move themselves forward. Hype unit getting knocked down. And Blue, we were talking about it on the way here, but... Time turns out, Hype Unit, I believe you said Shoe was right. Shoe was right. Either Hype smokes Knights or Knights smoke Hype. Well, we got the latter, not the former for them. Pretty well executed. A couple of good moments from Hype Unit, but all in all, Ricotta is the story of the first two games. Simzaloo does a little bit in game two, does a lot during that last point fight. And the Knights were just so overbearing. Their front lines were able to kind of take control. Like, they just... There was nothing Hype Unit felt like they could do. They couldn't breathe free. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Simsalu did step up on the Mave pretty big time, but so did G-Bunny. He created a lot of space for Mave to run around. Yeah. Uh, and Sim Simi uh, showed off his little strap going uh, <laughs> the double jump off the map. You think he's going to fall? Uh, 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 not yet. That was an interesting use of acrobatics. It was really cool to watch. Really funny that the minute he landed Exodia yeah, was already the just he like, got okay, over there. Boom. got you. Got taken out. Six and seven there for the Cassie. But six and two for the Mave. Ricotta at eight and three. And then, well, smack dab in the middle is G-Bunny at seven, three, and 13. And we haven't gotten to talk about the off tanks too much today, especially with Ricotta kind of running the show in the first two games. He did a lot on this Ash. 
Yeah, we need an aerial view of that one right there. How much space is he creating? He dashes to the backside of that wall and just slowly pushes the team back. The rest of his team is fighting from mid, kind of in their faces as well. And he's just like, he's like a, like a, what are those called? Those dog sheeps, the, the dogs that herd the sheep. Don't yeah, they have a specific I know what you're name. About. I have He's like herding the team yeah. into a kill box. Just pushing them slowly but surely. Yeah, right away. into the corner. Nothing they can do. He's a broom. And well, unfortunately for Hype Unit, they were the sheep in that case. And well, they had nothing to say about it. I'm also going to throw this one out there. Cuss Cutie, highest KDA so far of the qualifiers. Granted, it's been one day, but 6.9 for him. 5.9 is viral just behind him. And then breaking the streak of supports is Ricotta. Right there. Well, surprise, surprise. The guy who slaughtered everybody in the world with Strix is doing well. I don't think Cus died. He didn't die in game two. I don't think he died in game one. He had five deaths across the three, so a ah, few okay. smattered out here and there. Did really well, and we actually have him standing by with another member of the Knights. See how they're feeling after this win. That's right. After a, a little bit of a break, you guys come back in here day one of the qualifier week with the uh, – one of the more convincing matchups we've seen. Uh, where was the confidence kind of coming into this week? I know we followed along with you guys, some roster swaps very early on in this split. We've seen you guys build up. Split two, your win-loss was great compared to split number one. So where was the confidence kind of coming into this week after the break and knocking off maybe a little bit of that rust here with the big 3-0? Where did your confidence stand going into uh, your Wednesday matchup? Uh, I, I think the biggest thing uh, coming into this matchup was just like, respecting console and what they're good at. Uh, we had no hesitation with just banning Vivian, banning Victor, and just moving forward. Um, they're obviously a good team. Um, they they won console league, and we saw SSG kind of struggle with um, Flashpoint. So we weren't going to take any chances. We just we knew what they were good at, and we know what we're good at, and you know, we just played the game. So uh, With saying that you don't take any chances with them, do you think that you've shown any kind of strategies that you've wanted to keep for something later in the side, or have you kept everything close to your chest now, ready for what may be the more important games coming up? I don't think we've really showed anything. Really situational niche style drafting for the most part. We just wanted to make sure um, they, they couldn't get away with any unsuspecting um, win conditions that we aren't used to in scrims. I mean, I play Onslaught all day. I'm used to playing against console, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, it was kind of funny, you know, we were watching the first couple of games. They gave you uh, Strix both times. I don't imagine that's something that maybe carries over into your uh, Kanga matchup. Uh, you and Chronix, both two guys that love to play Strix. Uh, I assume it does, but how does maybe the, the strategy change for you guys pivoting from Hype Unit and then Kanga on Wednesday? I want to talk about that. I want to win. <laughs> you just want to win no matter what? Yeah, I, I want to share that information. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we're, we're obviously going to draft differently. Mm -hmm. um, it, you, like we said, it was very niche style drafting t drafting today for um, the console team, and uh, I, I think we're just gonna, you know, pull out like just full stops. Like we're we're not trying to hide anything. We're just trying to win. We we can win with our style, and um, we we know what we want to play, and that's you know that's that's that. Do you think you guys are playing the best paladins of the year right now? I know peaking at the right time is always important. Do you think you guys are peaking at the right time? I, I think we are. Yeah. I and, played awful today. I had one hour of sleep. I was, I, I was struggling <laughs> to say words, man. It was bad. Well, if that's a, if that's awful ricotta, I'm a little bit nervous. You, you don't want to see good ricotta. We don't. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to <laughs> see good ricotta. I don't know if Kang or anybody else you guys are playing this week want to see good ricotta. Thank you guys uh, so much for sitting down with us. Big congrats to you on your win today. We'll see you on Wednesday, going up against Kanga. We've got some games tomorrow, but to wrap up today, we'll go back to the desk. Well, they do exactly what they needed to on the nights to keep going. They're looking for some more wins. And while more wins might await them, but I think it's going to be a little bit before we see them play again tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit more interesting. We're going to dive down into that lower bracket, start this elimination process where teams, specifically Fatal Ambition and Cyclone, who already lost yesterday, could potentially go home. Yeah, that's where things get pretty intense, you know. You're down 0-2 in the loser's bracket. You get pretty desperate. Yeah. So it's always... For our side of things, interesting to see the, <laughs> the teams get desperate, I guess. Entertaining but. to watch, not entertaining to be a part of. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be starting All Business versus Cyclone. That's 11 a.m. here. It's going to be the same all this week until Saturday when we have to spice things up because we've got four best of sevens that day. But as you're watching Monday through Thursday, I guess now Tuesday through Thursday, make sure you're always going to be tuning in here at 11 
and see which of these teams are going to go home, which four teams can make it to the qualifiers. But I've been Gormizer. That's Blue from everyone here. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the morning. We're here live from Atlanta. The players are here. The stage is set. Let's get the police ball! where we also talk about the new stuff that we've got coming out for you all. Look, HRX is literally my favorite time of year. It truly isn't close. This is what I live for. It's that second place. I can't <laughs> wait to see what first place is. It's HRX. Cuando yo a ti te vi, mami Bailabas como un ángel, me acuerdo de ese party No lo hacías despacito, no eras como Dari Eras como Badoni, tu flow bastante cari Alright, hermoso y con timidez me gusta Y con esa sencillez que asusta Sabes bien cómo es que es combi completa De cabeza a los pies Sin effects, mami, yo te entono Te subo el pichi, te derrito el cono En mis historias siempre te menciono Pa' esa reina necesito un trono Sin effects, mami, yo te entono Con esos besos, chica, me emociono Con tu cuerpo y tu nivel Quieres otra vez Sé que tú quieres conmigo, amor Muéstrame sus pasos, te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres moverlo sin pena, ven Sin estrés, muéstrame sus pasos, te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres Sé que tú quieres conmigo, amor Talking for you. This is me going to make sure. Everything except that first set was a 3-0, wasn't it? It was 3-0 for Kanga, 3-0 for SSG, 3-0 for Knights. And, well, much to everyone's, or I guess not to everyone's surprise, the PPL teams won, although it took a little longer to get here than uh, most of us thought.